portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Well, we start this segment off with a story that a lot of Bahamians are, interest, are interested in. That's getting your passport. It's just four months left to go before the e-passport deadline, and officials from the passport office are still challenged with processing applications. Today, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Honorable Fred Mitchell, updated the public on e-passport production and what's causing the major backlog. Aladon Davis has this story. I was supposed to pick it up on the 23rd of last month, June. I've been here from the 26th of June trying to get this passport. Sharon Roll applied for her e-passport in April and says she has been turned away more than three times. She told our news team Monday that she's expected to leave the country for a vacation with her family on Thursday, but may have to sit it out because her passport is still not ready. My tickets are already booked. My kids, they're excited to go. And I'm the only one stuck, the mother, so the children can't go without the mother. So Taking advantage of the emergency? Um, no, I'm not taking advantage of that because that's $200 and I already paid $50 from April and I should be able to get my passport from then. Contrary to that, Acting Chief Passport Officer Freddie Tucker says Bahamians are taking full advantage of that $200 emergency fee. Collected about um, $24,000 yeah. in fees. And so persons are paying the fees. Yes. Yeah. Persons who are prepared and who are paying the $200 um, for to get their passports prior to their collection date, yes. Nearly 6,500 passports enrolled from March have still not yet been processed. 1,500 of them are from Freeport. According to Passport Office statistics, 11,000 passport applications have been submitted and 1,200 passports are produced per week. Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell held a press conference on Monday to explain the backlog in passport production, especially during this busy traveling summer period. Continue to be challenged by resources and manpower. Um, this is causing continued delays in the production of passports. Uh, the new emergency fee has been in place since uh, the 9th of July. For legal reasons, we could not charge people who had applied earlier than that the new fee brought in from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to help with uh, approvals because one of the issues was um, to do some checking to ensure someone at a senior level had to check off to ensure that, um, that the person was actually a Bahamian citizen. Outstanding overtime pay for staff who are working long hours, weekends, and holidays to decrease the backlog in passports is still awaiting approval from the Department of Finance. And once that is done, a new shift system for employees will be implemented. While the normal passport processing time is 12 weeks, the deadline to acquire an e-passport is November 15th. Now, if you need further passport information, you can use the department's email address at mofacustomerservice at bahamas.gov.bs. Yes. LaDawn Davis, ZNS Network News. From the courts, 20-year-old Tennyson Delaville made his first appearance in the South Street Magistrates Court today, accused of killing 26-year-old Thor Adderley on July 6th. Police say Adderley was involved in an argument with another man outside a nightclub located on Arawak Key when he was shot multiple times about the body. He was rushed to hospital where he later died. <laughs> This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. This is your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm C.S. Scatterly. Come Thursday, Bahamians will have the opportunity to invest in government treasury notes. The benefits to doing this include attractive interest rates, an excellent stream of income, very liquid and easily accessible. The offering memorandum will be available from the following banks, brokers and dealers. Scotia Bank, CIBC First Caribbean International, Commonwealth Bank, Bank of the Bahamas, Royal Fidelity, CFAL, FG Capital Markets, Colonial Pension Services, Providence Advisors, and Leno Corporate Services. The offering closes Friday. In other business news, the Bahamas Association of Compliance Officers reminds interested persons that the Bahamas Tax Information Exchange Portal is live. The deadline to register is July 31st. The reporting deadline for financial institutions to submit their final submission is August 17th. 
All queries regarding the Thai portal and the Foreign Accounts Tax Compliance Act reporting to help desk at taxreporting.finance.gov.bs. And in international news, the gold price has fallen to its lowest in more than five years as talk of United States interest rate rise this year has led investors to sell the precious metal. The price fell 4 percent, the lowest since March 2010. Investors turned to the U.S. dollar, which rose in the likelihood of the Federal Reserve raising rates because of a stronger U.S. economy. Investors generally buy gold during times of uncertainty. The price of platinum also fell 5 percent to its weakest since the global financial crisis. This has been your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm C.S. Darrow. Officials from the Bahamas Electricity Corporation confirming to our news team on Sunday that there was a failure of two current transformers in the control room at the Harbor Island Eleuthera power plant. Both fires that reportedly occurred last Wednesday and Friday are currently under investigation. However, BEC officials tell us that at this time there are no further issues impacting supply to Harbor Island. In tonight's Family Island feature, our Keishla Adderley sits down with the founder of a very special program in Grand Bahama's 8 Mile Rock area that's looking to make a difference in the lives of young girls and, of course, with help from BTC. Here's the BTC Family Island Connection. There's no shortage of pearls in Stephanie Burrow's world. Uh, the pink and the pearls, the colors for the princess court is pink mm -hmm. and white because of purity with the pearls. But the gems of wisdom she imparts are so much more valuable to the scores of girls she mentors. The goal of the princess court is to encourage the girls to remain sexually pure until marriage, to help them to become godly homemakers and to also enhance their spiritual life. Burroughs is the executive coordinator of Princess Court Ministries. They've pushed the message of sexual purity until marriage to more than 560 girls, guided by this characterization of participants. Little girls love to be called princesses, so we thought to give them that name to help them as they think of themselves as princesses, maybe that would help with their self-esteem, make them feel good about themselves and how beautiful they are. Thus the princess court ministry. But Barros realizes not all girls see themselves that way, and changing that is a big part of her mission. When we go to the schools and when we are walking around, I would encounter girls. Some girls may look unkept, some may look lonely, so I would just go up to them and talk to them, introduce myself, or ask a question, or ask them if they would like for me to buy lunch, or a snack for them and then tell them where my church is and the relationship continues. Mothers are also engaged in the program providing guidance to their juniors and then there's a corporate big sister. BTC has been one of the major roles in the program by its sponsorship. BTC has been sponsoring us from 2010 and is now 2015 and when we are supported by BTC we are able to buy the tea heiress for our girls and every year we have to give the girls tiaras because either it's lost or they can't find it or whatever, it's broken with, it, with, it, with the tiaras. So BTC assists us in buying the tiaras and the snacks, the drinks for the girls. The Princess Court is always looking for new members. It's a connection they along with BTC are using to change their corner of the world. Kish Latterly for the BTC Island Connection.